you very much, Ronnie Corbett fans everywhere. <laughs> but mainly nowhere. Now, uh, since the last series, when I read out a letter from an old school chum, thousands of you have rung up asking me to talk a bit more about my school days. I say thousands, you know. Hundreds of you have rung up <laughs> asking me to talk about my school. Let's be honest, nobody has rung up. <laughs> <laughs> nobody has sent me any letters either. I get so little mail, my letterbox is healed up. <laughs> <laughs> about my school days. And it is strange, isn't it? When people do call you on the phone, it is always at the most inconvenient moment. I mean, last week, for instance, when I'd gone out of the house for the day, you know, someone rang up while my answering machine was in the bath. <laughs> and it was actually a very important call because we'd just heard that our eldest daughter after three years of trying, has finally managed to get into Oxford. <laughs> now, I told her to stay off that bloody ring road. But she was... <laughs> our, our, other, our other younger daughter is proving to be a slight problem at the moment. There are signs that she may be a, a bit of a non-conformist after the other week when she shot herself in the foot to get out of the brownies. <laughs> No, I suppose, I suppose she was uh, upset. It's understandable. She'd just been made redundant as a cheerleader at Luton Football Club. <laughs> they've, they've appointed the town crier instead. Uh, now, now, you may ask yourself, why is he telling us all this? Why is he telling us all this? Very good. <laughs> I had the feeling you were going to ask me that. No, I, I seem to have wandered off the point a bit. I was going to talk about... It was very good, that, by the way. I was... I, they rehearsed that bit earlier. It was very good. Uh, I was going to talk about my school days, and to add a touch of authenticity, I have brought along this, one of my old school reports. Now, already I can hear cries going up, school report my elbow. That's just a fake made up by the prop department so you can get a lot of cheap jokes. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> St. Crippin's Comprehensive <laughs> Annual Report, R.B. Corbett, Vice Captain of Wimpy House. <laughs> now, I think it can be very interesting to look back and see how you actually did at school. I mean, here I am today, an international sex symbol, and... I knew you'd keep <laughs> I've just finished shooting my new blockbuster feature film, Rocky Three and a Half. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone wasn't available. I only appear briefly in the film as Dolly Parton's chiropodist. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working in the dark to a large extent. <laughs> now, now, when you look at me now, and I mean, it's hard to believe that as a child I was very weedy and incredibly thin. I used a hula hoop with a polo mint. <laughs> I was a very late developer. I remember when I used to play doctors and nurses in Linda Marchbank's back garden, I was always the one they sent for more bandages. <laughs> By the time I got back, Linda was up and about and fully aware again. I, I used to have this fantasy. I laugh about it now because, I'm, you know, I, I used to have this fantasy that Raquel Welsh would creep into my bedroom put her hand down her blouse and bring out two cup final tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see the doctor about that one. <laughs> he was no help at all. <laughs> he wanted to buy the tickets. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let us see what it's like some of my old subjects. Here we are. Maths, pathetic. Science, awful. <laughs> History, terrible. Geography, abysmal. This can't be right. I'm sure there's one subject as good at. Oh, here we are, here we are, here we are. English, yes. English. His knowledge of vocabulary is lamentably deficient. <laughs> I knew I was good at English. <laughs> I always remember English. I always remember English. I used to sit next to Herbert Wibley, who was the school sneak. <laughs> he had a nasty habit of sawing through people's conker strings, you know, <laughs> when they weren't looking. Grew up to become a vet, I believe. <laughs> and... <laughs> Music. 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 Sluggish progress, it says here. It has taken a year to stop him blowing the xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> when, 
when he sings in the choir, he has to be fitted with a mute. <laughs> it is not true. I was, a, I was a bit of a terror at school. I'll never forget the day I put glue in the first 15's rugby jerseys and they got stuck in a scrum for 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> the gym mistress saw them coming across the playground, thought the school was being attacked by a giant crab. <laughs> <laughs> things, things we used to get up to, dear me. I remember we used to put itching powder in the gym mistress's bed. <laughs> Watch the headmaster scratching himself all the time. <laughs> What else have we got? School Dramatic Society. <laughs> Variable, it says here. His performance as a Vestal Virgin left a lot to be desired. <laughs> the only moment of real credibility during the year came when his tights split open in Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> I'm beginning to regret bringing this along now. Finally, religious knowledge. Uh, let's hope I was good at that. What is it? Religious knowledge, he, ignorant and lazy. <laughs> when told to find Joshua in the Book of Numbers, he rang up director inquiries. <laughs> enough of that but uh, by a strange coincidence uh, act, the actually reminds me of a joke which I was going to tell you tonight anyway which has rather a religious flavor and concerns the vicar of a sleepy little parish church which is slowly falling to a terrible state of disrepair and the vicar is at his wits end and one morning at breakfast he turns to his wife he says bless my soul he said because he was a bit of a do-it-yourself addict. <laughs> Bless my soul, he said. The place is in a shambles, he said, since I took over this church in the early part of last week, he said. I've had woodworm in my pulpit. I have had rising damp in my foundations. I've had a leak in the font. And I... Out, please. <laughs> You know, there, there is a leak in the font, he said, like a sieve. And he said, if we christen a child with more than two names, we have to stop for a refill. <laughs> he said, the roof is falling to bits. He said, it's only the Death Watch beetle holding hands that's keeping it on. <laughs> he said, the stained glass windows are so damp, the angels have got water wings. <laughs> what are we to do? What are we to do? His wife said, well, you know what I think, he said. The building is possessed by an evil, diabolical force. He said, no, that's not at all true. We've paid off the loan from St George's months ago, he said. <laughs> the whole thing is in need of restoration, and unfortunately, the clerical coffers are bare, he said. But one thing, he said, the pilfering among the congregation is getting worse. The other day, the collecting plate came back, and even the pattern had gone. <laughs> he said, someone has even pinched all the hymn books. Now we have to sing what we can remember. <laughs> he said, this morning it was two carols and I did it my way. <laughs> well, his wife said, well, in that case, she said, there is only one solution, my dear. I will have to sell my charms on the streets of the village, at which the vicar spits out a mouthful of orange juice, accidentally baptising the cat. <laughs> he said, you do what? He said, the wife of the parish vicar plying her trade, flying her charms in the village is a bit of rough trade. What happens if the bishop finds out? She said, well, he'll have to pay the full rate, the same as anyone else. <laughs> to cut a long story short, off she goes. That first night, a few hours later, she's back, opens her purse on the table. She said, there we are. She said, that's not bad for a night's work. She said, $78 and 50 cents. Vicar said, $78.50? She said, that isn't bad at all. He said, tell me, who on earth gave you 50 cents? His wife said, everybody. 